Richard III remains one of England's most notorious and mysterious kings. He came onto the throne at a pivotal time in the Wars of the Roses, and he is seen as an opportunist who shed the blood of his own nephews to ensure that he became the king. Richard is a man who came onto the throne in 1483 in very bizarre circumstances, as he was initially supposed to be the man who was to look after the king in waiting, Edward V. However, under his guardianship, Edward V and his brother mysteriously disappeared in what is known as the Princes in the Tower. This has made Richard a villainous figure in history, and is believed to have been the one responsible for the deaths of his two nephews. However, it would be within two years that Richard would meet a bloody fate himself, and today he's seen as the last English king who died on the battlefield. So join us today to look at the brutal death of King Richard III, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Richard III was crowned king on the 6th of July 1483 at Westminster Abbey, but within two years he would be killed at the Battle of Bosworth Field in Leicestershire. The Wars of the Roses had gripped England for decades before Richard became king. He was sitting following the disappearance and denouncement of the Prince in the Tower at the top of the House of York, which surprised many as he was a brother to the former king Edward IV. Rumours emerged, however, that Richard was responsible for the murder of the true king, the boy Edward V, and through this a rebellion emerged, spearheaded by Henry Tudor. He would later become Henry VII, but despite the rebellion initially not being successful, Henry would try again two years later, and together the two met at Bosworth Field. Richard III's defeat at the Battle of Bosworth at the time was shocking. Specifically, who killed the king remains a mystery, but after the incredible discovery of Richard's remains under a car park in Leicester, the final moments of the king's life can be pieced together and told. On the 22nd of August 1485, Richard met Henry Tudor at Bosworth and rode into battle on his white courser horse. He had with him a strong army of around 8,000 soldiers, and the king's army outnumbered Henry's, but the key to the battle was sitting on another hill. Lord Stanley had a private army of 6,000 men, and he was a pivotal player in the battle, as his support meant everything to the two men. Richard III was deployed on Ambien Hill, and Henry on an adjacent hilltop. The battle swayed from side to side until Lord Stanley got involved and ordered his private army to support Henry Tudor, which surprised Richard and his forces. During the final part of the battle, it was said that Richard had Henry Tudor isolated, and that the Royalist army were fighting in the thickest, and the King's men were pressing for victory. Richard was worried about Lord Stanley's betrayal, and he had heard that Henry was situated a large distance from his soldiers, behind them, and was protected by a group of bodyguards. Richard, who was known for being a competent military leader, was confident he could strike the man he deemed to be trying to usurp him, and he led a small detachment of heavy cavalry, and charged towards Henry Tudor, and his surrounding force. In this attempt to end the battle, Richard was rather successful, and he smashed his way through Henry's guards, and killed his standard bearer. Fierce hand-to-hand -hand fighting then took place between the King's small group of charges and Henry's bodyguards, and Lord Stanley overlooking the battlefield noticed his stepson Henry was in trouble, and he commanded his soldiers to Richard III's position. It was noted how Richard fought bravely and valiantly, and allegedly even came within a sword's length of Henry Tudor, however this is where things drastically changed. Richard found himself very overwhelmed by Stanley's mercenaries, who charged towards him attacking his small force. It is disputed what happened next to Richard, but many agree that the king found himself in very marshy ground, and he and his horse became bogged down in the terrain, and the king was unhorsed. A Burgundian chronicler wrote, how Richard's horse leapt into a marsh, and it could not get itself out from it. Shortly after Richard was unhorsed, his final moments came. Famously, Shakespeare writes how he cried out, A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. It was stated how, the death blow was struck by a Welshman with a halberd, whilst Richard's horse was stuck, and it was said that the blow was so violent, that the king's helmet was driven into his skull. The man who killed Richard has been suggested to have been Rhys Ap Thomas, a leading Welsh Lancastrian, who shaved part of the king's head with the blow which he struck him. 
Henry VII's official historian stated how Richard died alone fighting bravely in the thickest press of his enemies, and another account says how he fell in the field, struck by many mortal wounds, with another account suggesting that they beat his head until the brain came out with blood, they never left him until he was dead. The true brutality of the final moments of King Richard III were confirmed when his body and remains were discovered in 2013 following identification. The wounds on the body suggested that Richard's death was in fact very bloody, with 11 wounds being visible on the remains and 8 of these were to the skull. These had been sustained during battle, which leads us to believe that Richard lost his helmet during the Battle of Bosworth. These wounds were sustained through a frenzied attack by more than one person, piling on the king as he came under pressure on the muddy battlefield. There was a narrow V-shaped cut found along the bottom right side of the lower jaw, suggesting that his face was cut by a dagger or knife or a small blade. There was another cut on his lower jaw, which could have been done by a blade which was thrust up inside of his helmet to slice the strap off and to take off the king's protection to his head. His body was relatively well protected when he died, and so there were no visible signs of injury to his torso, meaning that the chances are the king had significant and effective amounts of plate armour on, and when he died he was wearing this. There were also three glancing blows caused by a sharp blade such as a poleaxe or a sword on the scalp that shaved the bone. Two wounds were found on the left side above the ear, and one on the top, but these wounds would not have been immediately fatal. They were all caused by the same weapon as well. On top of the skull was a small piercing hole, which was caused by a weapon delivered to the king from above, and this could have been dealt by the spike of a poleaxe or a rondel dagger. The aim of this was to drive a hole into the king's skull, inflicting damage to his brain. At the base of Richard's skull, there were two significant wounds, found which caused damage to the top of the vertebrae, and this was caused by a blade that entered the king's head and sliced through his brain, and it was done so hard that it struck the other side of the skull. These massive wounds were likely to have been fatal, and were inflicted by a weapon such as a halberd, sword or a bill. This blow would have been savage, and was done with such brutality that it passed through the king's brain, and it was this wound that likely killed Richard. This wound would have been enough on its own to have killed the king. There were other wounds found to his body, for example one was delivered as a blow from behind with a dagger, which damaged his tenth rib, and another scraped the pelvis and was delivered into the king's right buttocks, which could have also been fatal, but it's believed this was done after death to shame the king, as his armour would have protected this area during battle. Richard's remains were able to tell the world the definitive story as to what happened to the king in his final moments. As Richard was unhorsed with his horse being stuck in the mud, he was forced to dismount, and at some point he lost or removed his helmet, leaving him very vulnerable. He was surrounded by a number of skilled soldiers with medieval weapons, and despite being protected by his own men, when Lord Stanley's men went for the king, Richard's men were quickly overwhelmed. He was attacked by a number of soldiers who thrust their swords and daggers towards him, but a crushing blow from a halberd or a bill stopped the king in his tracks. Richard stood no chance against all of the men intent on killing him, and with the strike from the halberd, the king was killed, and the reign of the Tudor dynasty began shortly after. Richard III's face was not mutilated after death to ensure that the population knew that the king was killed. His armour and clothes were taken off, and his naked body was carried to nearby Leicester on a horse, being displayed in public and exhibited with everyone to see that the king had been slain. It was left on display for two days, and was then interred in a plain coffin and tomb inside the low key church of the Greyfriars. His burial and body remained lost until 2013, when it was discovered and DNA testing put the remains beyond any doubt that they did in fact belong to King Richard III. With the death of Richard III, one of the most famous royal families in English history came onto the throne, the Tudors. The Tudors were known for their brutality, but Richard III was a king, who was also cut from the same cloth. He would do anything to become king, but it's believed that during the Battle of Bosworth Field, he fought bravely and valiantly, something that Henry VII's own historian confirmed, and Henry wanted to preserve this. His death was incredibly brutal, and the final moments of Richard III show how tough and bloodthirsty the final moments of the Wars of the Roses really were. 
Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.